Hello friends, so today in this video, we're going to discuss the first two problems from the code forces round 716 problem name perfect imperfect array. In this problem, you are given an array A of length n and then you have to just find out that whether there should exist a non-empty subsequence in this array such that the product of all its element is not a perfect square. What I mean by this is subs like you can see that subsequence means that you have to choose some subset of this whole array and then after choosing that subset the product of the elements in that subset is not a perfect square whether it is possible or not then you can easily understand that if you take out some subset okay let's assume that this is the subset of 100 and let's assume 10,000 okay if you take out that both of the numbers are perfect square perfect square means that if you uh, like if you multiply a uh, integer with itself the same integer then 25 is a perfect square okay which means that it can be broken down into two same numbers okay so as you can see 100 can be divided into 10 and 10 same as 10,000 like 100, 100 so now if you can see that if you take out a subset or any subset in which the elements are both of the elements are perfect square then you can easily because you multiplying you are multiplying if you multiply a perfect square okay so perfect square means like let's assume a so like a square if you multiply a perfect square with a perfect square then obviously that will also give you a perfect square okay but if you just have one non-perfect square which is like 5 5 is not a perfect square because you cannot divide 5 into two integers of the same kind of the same like the same two integers so this is not a perfect square so it is always beneficial to just find out whether only one element which is present which is not a perfect square because you can take out just that element in the subset and that's the answer because as you can see if you have all the numbers like as you can see 100 and, and like 100,000 like 10,000 so as you can see if you if all the numbers that's in the numbers are 9, 25, 16 now any subset you will choose as you can see if I choose 9 or 25, 16 or anything then whatever you will choose let's assume that I choose 25 and 9 and now because you're multiplying it it is just like multiplying 5 into 5 into 3 into 3 which is equivalent to like pair them up so it will be like 15 into 15 which will always be like so the number which will form after multiplying will always be a perfect square so which means that it is not possible to form a subset in which everything a perfect square and we can, and we can form a number which is not a perfect square so it is always beneficial to find out any number which is not a perfect square originally and just take that number if you just take that number then obviously our condition is satisfied so the simple problem is just find out that whether some element is present which is not a perfect square in the whole array and that can be easily done using the uh, sqrt function like square root function or you can just find out that whether for any number is a perfect square or not okay or not so i i can show you the code i will also mention the code in the description you can check that out so i have just taken input of all the numbers and just for every number in the array find out its square root okay so if this is a perfect square root so let's assume that if the number is let's assume uh, like uh, 8 okay if you do or like let's assume that uh, the number is 3 the so as you can see for the square root of 4 it is 2 into 2 for the, for the square root of 3 it is like 1.73 something and because you are type casting it into integer it will be just 1 only and because now if you do 1 into 1 it will give you 1 which means that 1 so because as you can see now 1 is not actually the square root of 3 so then you can easily see that if we find the square root of a or like the ith number and put it into integer if it is actually the square root then if we again multiply this x into x it should give me ai only because see if we divide 2 like if we find out the square root of 4 which is 2 and we again just multiply 2 into 2 it should give me the answer which is equal to 4 if it is not giving the answer equal to 4 then then like this is not actually the square root so if this is a square root then we just continue out because we are finding out any number which is not a square root if it is square root, we just continue out else if it is not a square root we just print out yes that whether i have found out a number which is not a square root and that will give me a perfect answer now you understand the logic and the code for this problem let's move on to the second problem it states that like you have n integers and 
what you actually have to find out is you have to find out the number of arrays of length n okay of length n so you have to find out an array of length n which means that the array has n elements so you have to find out an array of n elements and what the array should consist of you have to find out how many arrays are possible like how many arrays of length n are possible such that all its element are in the integer between 2 like 0 2 to the power k minus 1 which means that that number or every number in that array should be having k bits like the number in like the num any number in this array should be having k bits so let's assume if k is equal to 4 so any number will be having k bits so as you can see 2 to power 4 which is like 16 so it means that any number should be less than from 0 till 16 okay i hope you get the point because whenever you see like this it means that like they're talking about in bits form and the bitwise end of all the elements is zero so you have to somehow form an array such that the bitwise end of all the numbers is equal to zero like bitwise end okay so that's the second condition and the third condition is sum of all the elements is as large as possible so the sum of the elements is large as possible okay now you have to find out how many such arrays are possible okay and uh, you have to just count out how many numbers of areas are possible the answer can be very large so you have to do a modulo 10 to the power 9 plus 7 now what you can easily understand is first the problem is try to in such case just draw out the example which you are finding out so because you have n elements just draw it in the form of table okay which means that now let's assume that i in the array i have five elements i have to make an array of five elements okay and the and it should have four bits so as you can see this is the first element like the first element we have to fill out the second element the third element the fourth and the fifth and every element should have four bits okay now you want to somehow maximize the number you want such that the sum of the like the bitwise end of all the numbers should be equal to zero and also you want that the all the numbers should have k bits which is like which is satisfying which means k, k is equal to four in this case now for maximizing the number you want that all the bits should be one because that's the maximum possible number but because if you want to maximize a number if every number is one 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 only then how can you make this equal to zero i want that the bitwise end of all the numbers should be equal to zero okay now if you just make any of this like as you can see if you want to make the bitwise end like okay if i want to make the bitwise end of all the numbers equal to zero i have to somehow make any of this bit equal to zero if i make any of this bit equal to zero and if i do a bitwise and of the last bit of every number it will give me zero same if i just convert out any bit equal to zero it will give me zero why because the bitwise and operation is all the bits should be equal to one if any bit is equal to zero then the answer is zero so because if we somehow make any bit of every position equal to zero so let's assume that i make this zero and this zero I'm just like you can make out any zero you can make out this all zero so it as you can see if if i just convert out any bit of like at every position equal to zero then my condition is satisfied because the bitwise end of all the numbers will be turns out to be zero if you have some basic knowledge of bit manipulation then you can easily understand this problem because every bit when you do a bitwise and operation of all the numbers you are actually doing a bitwise and operation of all the bits so if you do a bitwise end operation of the last bits of all the numbers it is actually zero and same for every number okay now it can also possible that i can make two zeros and that will also give me zero but it will actually decrease down this number i'm actually intentionally decreasing out the third number this is also giving me uh, all the zeros and this is also giving me all the zeros but this is like decreasing out all the numbers and but we want that the number should be as maximum as possible so it means that i just want in every column on every column we just want one zero okay so it means that for every every column we just want one zero and that will maximize the numbers that and i have k columns i have k column because I, like every number has k bits and i have n rows so as you can see i just want like one zero in each, each column so as you can see how many like, like as you can see how many positions i have like so as you can see if i would if i take out this number like if i take out this number how many positions are there for which i can put a zero in because 
as you can see for the first column i have n positions because they are n numbers so n positions are there for which i can put or make a zero so i have to find out how many arrays i can form so in how many arrays i can form i have to find out how many numbers i can form and how many numbers i can form i just have to find out that if i just move out this zero in among all of these spaces it will give me different numbers if i put zero here it will form a different array why because now this number is changed if i put a zero here this number is changed if i put zero here this number is changed so i have n positions but i have to only put only one zero so among all the n positions i have to put one zero so how many choices i have i have n choices now again for the next column i have n choices and so on how many times k times because there are k columns k times so it means that n to the power of k why because for every column i have n choices to put a zero okay it's just a basic uh, like as you can see basic mathematical thing because for every position for every column there are n positions for and for every position i have only one position at which i, I can place a zero okay and now i have to do the same for every column and because every column is independent of each other we just have to multiply the answer and it is like n to the power of k so we just have to find out n to the power of k so the simple thing here is like you can just do uh and because n to power k it's just like n into n to n so we just have to do a mod of this at every point so it's just like mod modular arithmetic also so what you can do if you have watched my previous uh, like explanation of modular arithmetic i just use a common and simple functions like this it is very simple to use i can link down the video description how to use modular arithmetic and i've made a very simple uh, video how to use that so you can easily understand that so i just use two function mod function and the multiply function this multiply function use actually the mod function so that i can just do my multiplication very easily so what i actually have to do here is i just have to multiply n k times so just take the product of n and k this is the answer and we just have to multiply answer to store out my total answer but because we have to do the modulum arithmetic also we have to somehow multiply n k times but i have to also ensure that i have to do a mod at every point so that's what i'm doing i'm whenever i'm multiplying as you can see whenever i'm multiplying i'm multiplying using this multiply function which is actually doing a modular arithmetic so as you can see whenever i'm multiplying my answer with n this is actually finding our answer i hope you understand the logic and the code part for this both of the problems if you still have not you can mention our comment box i'll send next one to then keep coding and bye